welcome to Maths with Bob. Today we're looking at solving systems of linear equations. Uh, you'll find we've got equal equations and unknowns actually. Um, and uh, we've looked at the Kramer's rule before. Okay, uh, we're now moving on to what's called the matrix method, which is like a matrix equation which you have to solve. And uh, basically to solve via the matrix method, you need to do a bit of manipulation. Um, one of them is obviously we basically it's all uh, revolving around this. Uh, uh, the inverse matrix of A or A to the minus 1. Okay, so we need to actually find the inverse matrix to A and it does involve a bit of work basically and um, you'll see uh, we also need to know what about a unit matrix is and we, we basically need to do some transpositions and matrix multiplication so and we also need to find some cofactors as well I'll just uh, highlight them here. Okay and we're gonna have to look at what a transposition is. Okay, but what is a unit matrix? Uh, well, unit matrix uh, I. We're only just given a symbol I for the unit matrix. It's just uh, ones down the diagonal, basically zeros elsewhere, and it has a property that if you multiply a matrix by uh, this unit matrix, it basically gives it itself. You can multiply it on left or right, okay, because yeah, it's basically going to be the same size as the uh, matrix A. Okay, now uh, I'll just do a, a few examples here. Um, you can see here. Uh, let's have a look. I'll uh, just change the pen here. You can see here, I've, I've, we're going to work on this matrix A here. I'm going to keep this reasonably consistent. Okay, this is the matrix A, and um, we're going to be using this uh, throughout this uh, video. Okay, so the matrix A, um, you can see here is, I'll just make it a bit bigger. Okay, this is the matrix A, and this is the identity uh, matrix uh, 1, 1, 1 down the diagonal. Okay, now I just uh, you can just verify this yourself if you just want to multiply uh, A times I. You might remember how to multiply matrices, hopefully. Pour the row down the column. Okay, so let's, let's just actually do one. Uh, make this really big. Let's actually just have a quick look at how we get that one up there. Okay, so we pour um, this row down this column. Okay, and uh, that will be basically, uh, okay, 1 times 1 is 1. Okay, then minus 2 times 0 is 0, and obviously 1 times 0 is 0, giving us a 1 here. Okay, but we hopefully if you've watched the other videos, you know how to multiply the two matrices uh, together. Okay, so, all right. So let's actually move on. Uh, now, there is, um, first up, uh, we're going to have a quick look at, uh, okay, uh, we are, I've also done it the other way here. You can have a quick look at uh, I'll actually multiply by uh, I times A just to show you that it doesn't really matter which way you multiply. Okay, now uh, first up, uh, the definition of what is that? What is actually this transpose? Transpose. Now the transpose is uh, given, a, you can see here, a little symbol AT. That's called the transpose of uh, the matrix A. And basically all you do is interchange the rows and the columns actually to transpose a uh, matrix. Okay, just rewrite the rows as columns if you want to. Okay, now, okay, the, the matrix equation will uh, look a bit like this. Uh, this is the matrix equation here. Okay, A times X equals B. Now, a um, few things about this. Uh, a, uh, okay, is the uh, non-singular coefficient matrix. Uh, okay. All right, okay, so A is a non-singular coefficient matrix. Uh, X is obviously the matrix, it's a column matrix of the unknowns, and B is also a column matrix of the constants, okay, uh, when we have it, when we're looking at, uh, okay, systems of linear equations, the constants will be, uh, as you know, on the uh, right-hand side of the equal sign. Okay, so basically we need to solve for X, and we're going to go through this procedure with an example in a minute, but basically this is the process, okay. Okay, you basically multiply both sides of the equation by the inverse matrix a to the minus 1, and you can see here, uh, basically, let's actually go through this, because it's a little bit involved, but it's not too bad. Okay, so here we go, a to the minus 1 times a times x equals a to the minus 1 times b. So we just multiply on the left, if you like, uh, both sides of the equation by the inverse matrix, and we have to use this idea that a to the minus 1 times A, or if you like the inverse of matrix times itself is the identity matrix, okay, I, okay, and then obviously I times the X, which is the, uh, if you like, the column matrix of unknowns, is in fact basically just uh, itself, 
uh, and the answer is, uh, you can see here, a to the minus 1 times b, or if you like the inverse matrix of a times b. So basically that's the solution, that is the solution there. Sounds simple? Uh, yes, it does sound simple. However, there's a small problem. We need to find this inverse matrix, a to the minus 1. And I'll just go through basically how we do that. We First of all, we need to find what's called the cofactor matrix, and call it AC. Then we need to transpose the cofactor matrix to form the adjoint matrix called A to the A. To the a. So let's say it's sort of like a little power A, and this is A to the power C, if you want to think of it like that, the cofactor matrix and the adjoint matrix. Then we just divide the adjoint matrix by the determinant of A. So we're going to need to find the determinant of A as well. And as I'm saying, it's fairly involved, uh, but let's go through some examples. Well, actually, just one example. This is fairly involved. So, okay. First up, uh, we go back to our old friend A, which is in fact uh, our old matrix A from before, and we ne now need to form what's called the cofactor matrix AC. Now, okay, how do we do that? Well, basically, uh, what you have to do, okay, okay, so you just take one here, okay, okay, that's one, and you need to replace it with its cofactor matrix. Now, you uh, you might, um, that's actually a determinant actually will be, the cofactor will be in fact a number, uh, but uh, so it actually is a determinant. So what, what do you do? Well, basically you remember, you cross out uh, the row and the column, and you can see here this is a bit which is left, okay, uh, here, okay, um, okay, so it's basically, um, you can see there, minus 1, 3, 2, 4, minus 1, uh, 3, 2, 4, and you have to work that number out. Now, okay, so that number works out to be minus 10. You might remember how to do these. Okay, I don't know, hopefully you remember how to do these. Crisscross, there you go, uh, what's that? 1, minus 1 times 4, minus 2 times 3 is 6, so it's minus 4, minus 6, minus 10 times 1. Now, the trouble with, with the cofactors is if you've been going through the determinant videos, you'll realize that there's an alternative sign. Uh, 1, minus 1, 1, oh, which goes down here, the same signs alternate. And you might remember that, in fact, this uh, the sign is really minus 1 to the i plus j, where i and j are the row and the column, so the sum of the row and the column basically give you whether it's a positive or negative. But it's fairly simple in a 3 by 3, you just alternate the signs as you go around. Okay, now I've done this, you can see here, a reasonably complicated uh, cofactor matrix, and we eventually get the cofactor matrix over here. Minus 10, 10, minus 5, 1, 1, minus 1, 7, minus 8, 3. Okay, so a fair bit involved just to get the cofactor matrix. Okay. Okay, now we transpose the cofactor matrix. Okay, so this, if you like, uh, this row now becomes this column. Okay, and this row becomes this column, and this row becomes this column. This is what the transpose is. You don't need to change the rows and columns. So we now have the adjoint matrix A to the little power A. Okay. Then we have to divide it by, okay, the determinant of A. Now the determinant of A, um, we're going to have to work out, okay, um, but basically it's not too bad. Uh, I've done it here quickly. We've actually got some numbers here already. 10, 10. I've actually expanded by the first uh, row and uh, basically it goes uh, plus, uh, okay, uh, well, yeah, plus here, I'm sorry, it's plus 1 times uh, minus 10 and, you know, and then it's minus, minus 2, actually makes that a plus 2 here, times the 10 here, and then a minus 1 times uh, the 5. Oh, well, oh, actually, hold on, plus, minus, plus, no, it's actually plus 1 times minus 5, and giving us eventually a determinant value of negative 5. Okay, so we're nearly there. Okay, so how do we get the uh, inverse matrix to A? Well, basically, we get this adjoint uh, matrix, which we've just transposed the cofactor matrix to, from, or if you like, we form this, this uh, new matrix, A to the power A, or the adjoint matrix, okay, and now basically we need to determine, well, divide it by the determinant of A, which was, uh, we worked out just a minute ago, was negative 5, okay, so we're going to rewrite it like this, okay, so this is going to be, um, okay, let's see if I can get, let's see, uh, let's see if this works, ah, Okay, all right, yes, okay. All right, so this is, okay, it's a bit off the screen there. Okay, but basically this is a good starting point. Now we can actually are ready to solve uh, this matrix. Okay. 
OK, so the system of equations would look a bit like this. Uh, this is the our system of equations. OK, OK, we can see here these are, OK, and uh, you can see here we've actually uh, bigger. OK, um, now I've used A again, and obviously the X is just the unknowns, uh, the column matrix X, Y, Z, and B you can see here is the uh, constants 599, 599. And we just basically go ahead and multiply. Um, okay, we just go through and we multiply uh, the, if you get the inverse, this is the inverse here, with the minus 1 on 5 times, okay, the joint matrix. And then we multiply it by B, okay, which is 599. And eventually uh, we end up getting here the solution eventually, 1, minus 1, and 2. Okay, now that is, okay, X. Y and Z. Okay, so if you like, our column matrix X is now one minus one and two. Now, what does this look like? Well, obviously, luckily, when we've been looking at unique solutions, I'm just going to put in GeoGebra and have a. Okay, this is um. Okay, here we are. Now, I've actually put in the point of intersection. Okay, you can see here A. So all these. Okay, um, three planes will intersect, I'm just trying to uh, basically at one point here, okay, and uh, it's just basically uh, going to be a, if you like, a, a, well, it has a unique solution, okay, uh, these three uh, system of linear equations has a unique solution, but it doesn't always, and this is the trouble with, uh, you can imagine, you know, um, basically what's the scenarios, well, some of the times there may not be a solution at all, and there could be, in fact, uh, okay, they all may intersect in, on a line, okay, which would give an infinite number of solutions. So um, we're going to be looking at Gaussian reduction uh, in the next video um, and hopefully look at some cases where we don't always have this, uh, what's called a unique solution. But uh, thank you for watching and uh, bye for now.